Hi, I'm Agnes. And I'm Natalie. We're friends and co-workers. And this is our podcast, Dinner Last Night. Nat and I share a passion for food and events. And over 35 years of combined experience in the hospitality industry. So pour yourself a glass of wine. Or whiskey. And join us while we share our adventures in home cooking, entertaining. And of course, what we made for dinner last night. Hi, everyone. Welcome to this week's episode of Dinner Last Night. Hi, Agnes. Hi, Nat. So the theme of today's episode is mindful eating for the holidays. And we actually have a special guest joining us today, Dan Connolly. Uh, Dan is a coworker of ours. Um, he is a registered dietitian nutritionist. Dan's worked in wellness within the food service industry for almost 10 years. His job generally consists of developing overall wellness strategies and solutions, developing food concepts, reviewing menus and recipes, and training staff. But his favorite part of the job is nerding out with our chefs about ways to create food that celebrates flavor and nutrition. Dan also enjoys running absurdly long distances, including running the Philadelphia Marathon the last few years. So welcome, Dan. Welcome, Dan. Thanks, guys. I'm really excited to be here. I've been listening to uh, all of your episodes thus far and just can't wait to uh, dive in. All right. Well, let's go. Dan, what did you have for dinner last night? Yeah, I actually um, was doing a little recipe testing in my kitchen last night um, for, the, for the blog that I'm thinking about starting called Dietitian Dan. Uh, so I was testing a roasted cauliflower steak recipe. Mm. Yum. Yeah, so it's, yeah, so I was uh, doing some Zatar roasted cauliflower steaks. So, you know, just cut up the cauliflower in the middle to nice thick steaks, kind of toss them in the, the seasoning and throw them in a sheet pan. But to pair with those, I was doing, I wanted to get um, some plant-based protein on there. So I did some Harissa roasted chickpeas also. Ooh, yeah. Um, yeah, so then I, I threw some tomatoes on top with the chickpeas, put them on a different sheet pan, threw them in the oven. And so real kind of, kind of simple, right? Because both those things kind of set it up, throw it in the oven. And then while that's roasting, I cooked off some farro. And while that was kind of cooking, I just made a quick uh, yogurt mint sauce to kind of top Yum. it at the end. Wow. That sounds awesome. I love Zatar. I feel like mm -hmm. there's not enough recipe with it. It's What does it have in it? Like sesame seeds? And what, what's what's the mix of Zatar? It's so delicious. Yeah, it's so good. I, it's got a bunch of stuff in it. I know it's just it's got a few different herbs, so it's kind of got that herby kind of flavor. It's got some um, citrus notes and some nutty flavor. I guess, like mm -hmm. you said, from the sesame. Sesame, yeah. Yeah, it just it goes so well on so many things, and I agree with you. It's just it's underutilized, and it's one of those right? things I think you can buy it, have it in the cupboard, and just like it's a huge flavor powerhouse. Yeah, right. I think that the citrus flavor, I think it has sumac in it. And yep. I think that's yeah. where what the it citrus is. comes from. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Which is something you don't really see or hear about very often, I feel. Sumac yep. is another thing that's like really underutilized. Uh, I mean, at least in like kind of Western cooking, I think. Mm -hmm. Well, you don't see, you don't really see sumac sold just on its own like you would buy cinnamon. You know, I feel mm -hmm. like it's always part of a blend. It's like reddish, right? Yeah. I think that, that's mm -hmm. going to be some research for you. Yeah. <laughs> you get some quick Googling. Out. <laughs> that sounds delicious. So, like, what did you do? You said you took the middle of the cauliflower steak. Like, what did you do with the rest of the cauliflower? Yeah, so I had two whole cauliflower heads, and I cut about one-inch steaks, two one-inch steaks from each of the cauliflower heads. And then, that's yeah, the leftover... Good. Yeah, yeah. So it was kind of four meals is what I was going mm -hmm. for. Um, so then the leftover cauliflower, I same thing. I just kind of tossed them in some of the spice mix and, and threw it on the sheet pan too. And it's just going to be tossed on top of the plate as well, just to kind of use it up and eat it. That sounds awesome. Did you say you toasted farro? Did I hear that correctly? Not toasted. I, I like boiled it basically, you know, steamed it kind of. Oh, oh, oh. I totally forgot. I should have mentioned this too. I put some golden raisins and lemon zest and lemon juice in there. Yeah. I love raisins and savory food. That sounds good. Yeah. I feel like we were just having a conversation at work about that, actually. About Definitely. raisins and food. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think there was a big... I think there's a big divide. There's a big <laughs> divide. <laughs> Amongst those who enjoy it and those who detest it. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, that sounds delicious. It already sounds much healthier than what I made for dinner last night. Oh, but yeah, like, go ooh. ahead, Matt. No, I'll let's see that. what Agnes made. <laughs> ooh, okay. So actually, um, I've mentioned in the past couple of episodes that I've been on that half-baked harvest soup, and I hate to bring her up again, but I'm... Um, Actually, it's Half Baked Harvest website, and I made another soup from her. I um, I mentioned before that I really like her website and the pictures, and it's really rustic and wholesome and all of that good stuff. So I made this recipe. It's called Pesto Zuppa Toscana, and it's a soup with uh, spicy chicken sausage. Uh, bacon, kale, it has potatoes, pesto, it has um, it has a whole milk, lemon juice, Parmesan cheese. And again, I love her recipe, the way that she set it up, because you can, um, she gives you the timing and everything to do it in a slow cooker, doing it in the Instapot or doing it on the stovetop, right? Mm. And she also gives you the alternative if you don't want to do heavy cream, which I don't like heavy cream in soup necessarily. You can use whole milk. And also that recipe is awesome because... Instead, uh, it has potatoes in it, and I figured that instead of potatoes, you know, in the next couple of rounds, I could switch for beans or maybe sweet potatoes. So I made it last Monday for dinner, and Joe literally said that it was the best soup I've ever made. So, wow. wow. so guess what? I made it again last <laughs> night. Uh, I actually went to my uh, one of my sister in law She got injured, and I... Um, I brought it over for her to freeze and 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 use in the next couple of days. And uh, yeah, it was awesome. It was very good. That it has kale. It has kale in it too, which kale f- from far. We, we I had this big discussion with Joe. I enjoy kale more than spinach in my soup because spinach gets slimy and not appetizing. So, but kale, yep. So yeah, kale is isn't. I mean, sorry, spinach. I feel like isn't. It's not like a strong enough. Uh, like it's not right. like fibrous enough to kind of right. hold up for like a long cooking simmering. Right. It sounds like everybody had much healthier dinners than I did. <laughs> <laughs> well, I knew we were f- we were going to be recording this episode, Matt. You know. <laughs> so I. I mean, it wasn't unhealthy. It's ju- it was just. Uh, comparatively but I um so I had like two pounds of ground lamb that uh I had gotten at the grocery store I'd never seen it the store I was at Aldi and I'd never seen it there before so I got two pounds of it and I was kind of trying to figure out all week long what to make and then I decided I would do like a lamb ragu which you know normally that's made with like a lamb shoulder or shank right and like cooked for a long time so that you get like you can like pull the meat apart um, so I decided I'd try it with a lamb ragu, and then I decided I would also break out my um, slow cooker, which I probably haven't used in like three years. I don't know why. I just really don't like use it that often. But I figured like, I guess now is a good, as good a time as any to figure mm-hmm. out how to properly use it. Um, <laughs> it's not something I'm like particularly comfortable cooking with. We never had one growing up. In fact, my mom doesn't know how to use one. I actually had to show her like a few right. years back. So anyway, so the lamb ragu was this recipe I found online after some searching. I was trying to search for one that was specifically for ground lamb. Right. Um, And it was delicious. So you can, so it had two instructions. You could do it for like four hours on high or six on low. Mm -hmm. Um, So I started prepping too late. So I did it for four on high. Um, (laughs) But it was really, really delicious. And it had like the base of it, you know, you brown all of the lamb first. And then, you know, the base of it has like onions, carrots, a typical like mirepoix, right? Onions, carrots, celery, um, but also uh, diced pancetta and Mm -hmm. Four fillets of anchovies. Ooh, I love that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then you put it all in the pot. You put like whole peeled tomatoes in, like a whole can of that. Uh, some tomato paste, like a big sprig of thyme, big sprig of rosemary. Uh, and then I just like let it sit. I don't know. You know, it kind of reminded me a little bit of baking though. This whole like slow cooker business where like you put it in and then like it's just there and you have to wait. And you can't yeah. really do anything. To no, fix it. <laughs> I mean, honestly, if you put it in your oven, whatever temperature, like 300 for four hours, you will get the same results. That's true. It's That's just true. this is electric yeah. and it, it gives you another kind of like appliance, you know, to play with. 
But anyway, so it turned out delicious. We had it over some rigatoni. Mm -hmm. um, And actually, my sister and her boyfriend ended up coming over unexpectedly. Or they were visiting for the weekend, but they weren't originally staying uh, with me. But they ended up coming over that same night. So I was like, oh, well, it's good. I cooked two pounds of ragu. So we all had that. Um, and then actually tonight with the leftovers, I'm going to make a shepherd's pie, which is my favorite thing ever. So I'm really excited for that. Wow. <laughs> yep. Mm-hmm. I've been cooking with leftovers though all weekend long. This morning too, um, when we had the lamb ragu, I also like just got some like, like a little cheese board together, you know, some cheeses, some charcuterie, that kind of thing. Um, and I had... A little bit of like leftover cheese, maybe like an ounce of Gouda, an ounce of Manchego, and then like half of one of those little logs of um, like herbed goat cheese. Mm -hmm. And it was sitting in my fridge. And I was like, what am I going to do with this? Because like, I guess I could just eat cheese for breakfast. But, you know, they were all still in the (laughs) house. So I was like, I can do something with this. So I decided to make a frittata with the three cheeses. Ugh. It was so perfect, so delicious. Yeah, and it was like the easiest thing. I was like, oh, this is genius. Why don't I do this more often? Frittata, yeah. <laughs> I drizzled some of the leftover honey from my cheese board on it while I was eating it. It was great. That sounds amazing. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So um, good thing Den is here. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> For my three cheese so... breakfast <laughs> Yeah. So the, the, so the reason why we thought it would be a good idea to have Dan on the podcast is because a lot of times everybody eat excessively and during the holidays, especially in November, December, and then, you know, in January is panic mode and nobody wants to drink and nobody wants to eat. So we figured, is there a way to do some damage control ahead of time and maybe me, be more mindful and appreciative of what we are feeding our bodies with? During the holiday season, maybe there's some tricks, some tips, anything that we can do to kind of counterbalance so that January is not a dry January. <laughs> How did I? <laughs> I didn't realize did this I was your right? entire motivation <laughs> yes, for having Dan on the show was so Very that selfish. you could still drink in January. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, Dan, what's like... I guess, you know, I think it would be interesting to hear sort of your take and your view on like wellness as a whole and and how like mindful eating fits into that. Like, do you have, you know, you said that one of the things that your job includes is um, coming up with like overall wellness strategies and solutions. So like, do you have personally have an overall wellness strategy? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's a good question. A, a great place to start, I think, of like... At each meal, I kind of try to think about first, what are the veggies or the fruits and veggies of that meal? Um, Trying to make that, whether it's a small kind of quick on the go meal at lunchtime or something, or if it's like I'm building dinners or setting myself up for breakfast the next day or something, thinking about making about half the plate fruits or vegetables. Um, So in the morning for me, that tends to be fruit, right? So like I always make sure that I have apples and bananas in the house so that I can have quick uh, fruit in the morning. And then after thinking about the fruit and veggie piece, then I try to think about what type of kind of grain or starchy item am I eating and making um, like a whole grains, always choosing whole grains or some type of brightly colored starchy vegetable as that kind of carbohydrate rich piece of my meal. Right. And then kind of finishing off with the protein. So I know that kind of is like flipping, I think, most people's idea of creating a meal on its head, right? I feel like a lot of Mm -hmm. people start with the protein and then build the meal from there. Um, So I found for me, like I said, flipping it around helps me ensure that I'm getting all those fruits and veggies right from the get-go. And then kind of using, like I talked about in the recipe, using herbs and spices and citrus and things like that to so that's not boring, right? I still want food Mm -hmm. to taste good. And then just trying to maintain that kind of balance as much as possible. There's always going to be indulgent, you know, items that we want. Um, and so it's just kind of keeping that balance piece. Okay. So I feel like with with this state of mind, Natalie, we have to re-record all of our Thanksgiving episodes because we literally said for Thanksgiving, we're starting with the meats. <laughs> 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 so it is completely the opposite, but I guess if you have wellness in mind that's the best place it's not an afterthought right it's where you start yeah and if you start there i feel like 
you might give a little more effort or not effort as but like more thought into what those vegetables are and what you're doing to them and you know what's their flavor what would complement their flavors stuff like that so how do you apply that when it's a time of the year where all of the meals you know you're not in control of all the meals maybe you go to other people and to other people's house and so you're not completely in control and then so how do you balance that out you know with the rest of your meals of the week you know yeah so balance is like a huge aspect of life in general i think so like um like balancing your checkbook or like work life balance all of these things require balance i think and none of them are like one and done check marks on your like to-do list right they're like these continuous pursuits that you always have to keep top of mind and have to keep working at and so i think finding a balance in your diet is very similar it's not a one and done you kind of continue it's like a something to strive for some tips i think around trying to keep that balance uh, especially if i like you said no i'm going over somebody's house for dinner and i have no idea what they're gonna make it's a holiday or mm -hmm. some type of party, and it's going to probably be a bunch of indulgent things. So that day, I'll make sure, um, more so than most days, to eat a nice, re eat regularly, eat a nice, um, healthy breakfast or lunch or whatever the meals are before. I've heard, so kind of to counter that, is hearing people try to not eat the day of holiday so that they can kind of like save up or something for the dinner. Right, I save up their calories. Yeah, some people yeah, do that. Right, right, like exactly. room in your tummy. Yeah, is that not a good idea? Is no, that not a thing, Ben? I think it's, uh, it's a very hard strategy to be successful at because I think what ends up happening is you get to the holiday meal or the house or wherever you're going, and you're so hungry, you end up overeating way more and indulging way more than you would have if you would have just had a normal day's worth of food. So that's part of it. And then also making sure you drink enough water throughout that day as well. So like staying hydrated is another big tip. That kind of goes for everyone any day, all the time. Because <laughs> um, uh, getting enough water is like super important. And it's one of the things I think people forget about or don't do enough of. Um, Guilty as charged. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> so I like interesting fact around kind of like hydration and stuff. Most people um, actually mistake their body's thirst cue as a hunger cue. So like when you're thirsty or, or starting to get dehydrated, you think that you're hungry and then you end up eating, right? Which leads to ex excess eating. Mm. So Dan, I, you can't see us right now, but Anya's and I both just <laughs> reached for our glasses of water uh, and drank some. <laughs> are we going to take a group hydration break? Group hydration break. <laughs> you know, I think the other the other issue when if I'm hosting an event, then uh, and I'm sure it's the truth for Nally as well. So we make this whole meal, and then we have leftovers. And we talked about Thanksgiving leftovers, but we have leftovers for you know, a couple, you know, two to three days. And it's like a time where, for instance, I like a nice, you know, cheese and charcuterie board, but, you know, I I wouldn't normally eat it in, you know, three days in a row. But if it's left in my fridge, I'm not going to let it go bad. So I guess that's also a challenge. Yeah. I don't know if I have a solution for that off the top of my head. I know. Buy, don't buy cheese. Don't buy cheese. <laughs> or measure. Uh, one of your previous episodes I just listened to, you were uh, very meticulous about your measuring. So maybe. <laughs> I know. <laughs> wow, that came back fast. Yeah. <laughs> so when the guests come in, you say, you get 2.5 ounces of cheese. You get 2.5 ounces of cheese. Yeah. Well, that was all individually, you know, presented. And I guess that's the probably the healthier way to do a, you know, to do a cheese board because. Eventually, people will take one cup, but the chances of them taking two to three cups, whereas if it's just a big display and everything is out in the open, right? So that's mm -hmm. a way to control food. But yeah, do you tend to, do you also tend to maybe work out more or have more like, yeah, work out more and uh, do running more during the holiday season because you know that maybe you will eat more as well? I don't. I'm sure there's people that do. It's just really, it's really hard to outwork your diet so to speak right 
It is. Like, yeah. <laughs> so, like, the simplest thing is to not consume the excess calories and try to work them off, right? Oh, but... man. I know. I know. No. <laughs> the worst. That was so helpful. <laughs> uh, I don't have the numbers in front of me or anything, but, like, when I go for, like, a run, and I, like you guys said earlier, I run pretty far, the amount of calories that I burn could easily be, like, a piece of cake right like one piece of cake or something and i run pretty far that's it oh my goodness hmm. oh man this is this is kind of this is kind of bumming me out dan i know i'm sorry <laughs> so dan but working uh, so hold on wait so working out is very important everybody should exercise and get some exercise um right. every day i know most of us or at least the three of us with working um we're walking around so much that probably counts as or enough exercise <laughs> or used to <laughs> used to walk so much but yeah so dan do you and your family have any sort of holiday eating traditions like what is it like with your family do people i mean it, does your family subscribe to the same uh wellness strategy as you <laughs> um so holidays are kind of I think Thanksgiving is like the big food holiday for my family. Um, and that's that's like a big food one, I think, for everybody. And there's always, I guess there is a good amount of vegetables there. But no one's ever asked me my advice, for my advice in designing the menu. Um, <laughs> so my, <weird. laughs> Yeah. That's okay. My aunt has it every year and she does an amazing job. She does like 90% of the dinner. Her and her husband um, do like 90% of the dinner and have like a few people bring like side dishes or whatnot. Right. She always does an amazing job, so she definitely doesn't need my help. Um, but turkey is the star of the show of that holiday, I think. And then there's, like I said, some good vegetable side dishes always available. What's your favorite thing at Thanksgiving? Don't say uh, green beans. No. no. <laughs> um, I kind of, to be honest, I like the variety. I, I, that sounds like a cop out answer, maybe, but I like the fact that I can have like twelve things on my plate. And like no one's gonna be judging me because I have twelve things on my plate right now. All right. Well, it goes back to portion, right? If you have a little bit of everything, you know. I was I was thinking today, we have a lot of different size dishes at home, you know, platters, plates, bowls, and all of that. And I feel that sometimes we lose track when we fill our plates of what is, you know, a portion like a decent portion. What's a real portion? What's a portion of protein what does that look like you know because we i feel like we can't really you know that diagram with the plate that shows the protein and all that where if you feel if you fill up like some of those 12 inches plates that you have at home like that's a lot so what does that look like right for a quick you know a quick plate what does you know the the amount of protein for a meal what does that look like versus fat and all of that good stuff yeah so generally speaking um the protein I know there's a there's a, a good like uh, frame of reference would be like a deck of cards like playing cards mm -hmm. is like their idea of how much protein generally speaking right everybody's different but that's the the general portion size oh wow I know it's not as big as you think right no no <laughs> that's like smaller than my palm yeah it's like four ounces right wow wow we're learning so much. <laughs> <laughs> so I have a trick that I um, use, especially at the holidays, because I think, you know, most people at like large family gatherings, you know, food is like so closely tied to family for, for so many people. And it's usually like this all day affair, right, where the food is just out all day. And so this new trick that I've started doing, and Dan, you can tell me if this is completely in vain and re or more of just a placebo effect that I'm giving myself here is instead of taking, especially if there's like paper plates or something like that in different sizes, when I first hit the buffet or the food, I take a smaller plate. I take like a dessert plate instead. And then when that plate is like full or, or whatever, when I can't fit any more on that plate, then I just go and eat that. And then I'll go back if I want to, if there's, you know, if there's something else, you know, that I didn't, that I couldn't fit on the plate. But a lot of times what I find is that actually that's enough food for right now. And like the rest of the food is still going to be there. And like in a couple hours, I'll try it. Or maybe, you know, I'll just graze as I walk by. But I found that to be helpful for me. I mean, I'm not going to lie and say like, I only ever eat one six inch plate of food at family gatherings now. Yeah. That would be a blatant lie. 
But I have found that at least that initial plate, you know, like when you first hit the food, wherever it's at, at your party, I think a lot of people tend to be like, you know, want to try everything. And so you, you kind of like try and put as many things on your plate as possible. But I don't know, because like That's if I can, end up eating five like small a... plates. Yeah. <laughs> no, uh, there, I think there's. I mean, I can't quote it, but I know that there's some um, research around that of plate size dictating how much food someone actually ends up taking and therefore end up ends up consuming. And so I think you're really onto something there. Um, and especially if it works for you, then it works for you, right? So yeah, because I'm definitely guilty of like just going really hard, especially on the first plate, because I just get excited about like all the variety and I want to try everything, even if mm -hmm. I don't end up liking all of it or eating all of it. That's another thing too, is like just deciding in your head that if you don't like something that much, you also don't have to like eat the rest of what's on your plate. <laughs> right? Yeah. A lot of but... times I feel like I have FOMO. Like I, I feel like if I don't eat it now, then it's gone until next year. And I, I should eat as much as I can right now. Otherwise it's going to be gone. That's true. I think, you know, I was thinking too about why uh, other reasons why people kind of overindulge or like eat a lot mm. over the holidays, other than just being at the gatherings. And one thing I thought of too, was also just like stress eating because it's a, it's a stressful time for a lot of people. And I, I've noticed like I spend so much time like running around doing errands or shopping that I spend a lot of time in the car. And then because I spend so much time in the car and I'm trying to go from store to store, I end up hitting like junk food drive throughs or I become like a sucker for like seasonal um, sweets and things that you see at like end caps or at the cash registers that normally I would never eat, right. Or would not really have any interest in. But in my head, I'm like, oh, I'm kind of hungry and I don't have time to stop. So I'm going to get these, I don't know, like weird, like cranberry nougat cookies that they have here. Because also, when else can I get them other than the holidays? All right. Yeah. Yeah. So one strategy, I think, for that, one strategy would be like never go to the grocery store hungry. That's mm -hmm. kind of something, yeah. you know, I find myself uh, trying to make that a rule. Some, most of the time I go grocery shopping, walking home from work. And sometimes I'll be hungry and I'll actually go home first, eat something, then go to the grocery store. Because I know if you're in that store with all those options and you're hungry, like the hungry mind will take over. That yeah. is so true. I think maybe people need to eat better the rest of the year. And then they wouldn't have <laughs> this, like, <laughs> you know, <laughs> they need to do more home cooked meals. So like that, they wouldn't overindulge too. For yeah. Thanksgiving. Um, the holidays, like you're saying, there's there's oftentimes these very specific foods um, that you know are tied to memories or tied to like yeah. these powerful moments in your life. I think in those situations, indulging when it's worth it, I think is another important strategy to think about. Like if your grandmother makes this wonderful like homemade pie every year for uh, Christmas. And you're thinking like, oh, no, I already had so many indulgent things today. Like, but there's this um, like really strong, emotional, powerful memory tied to that pie. I'd say eat the pie, right? And then move on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, but like, I think fig like making sure you're real with yourself about um, what's actually kind of worth it, right? Versus like, now you just said something about like cookies on the end cap that like, are they going to be the best cookies right. you know, or are no, they just like never. whatever cookies? No, that those meals are never that satisfying. <laughs> right. Do you also feel like people eat too fast sometimes? And if they were to eat slower, maybe they would realize that they fall faster and enjoy it more. A hundred percent. hundred percent. That was another thing that I, when you guys gave me the topic that I really wanted to talk about, I think people, um, especially with indulgent foods, like really need to slow down like mm. really slow down. Um, and this is going to sound weird, but maybe you guys can tell your relatives that your dietitian friend told you to do it and maybe they'll join <laughs> you instead of thinking I'm weird or you're weird. Um, but before <laughs> you even eat the food, you should probably try like really looking at it, seeing like what's cool about it or and then smelling it and see like, are you picking up like the buttery crust or the chocolate and stuff like that? And then- Snapping then a take a bite. Instagram. Yeah, you know, make it a whole experience, right? And then you, you know, you take a normal size bite, and 
let it kind of sit on your tongue and really, again, analyze that flavor and, and the textures of the food. You, I feel like you'd find that a little bit will go a long way if you do, if you eat like indulgent foods that way. Mm -hmm. You could thank the full, the food for being so awesome. You yeah. look great. <laughs> you taste amazing. Yeah. Like having the whole Mary Kondo approach, you know, thanks you for bring bringing me joy. Me so joy. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I think there's something to that though, Dan. I really like to smell food. I mean, also like it's, um, oh my gosh, really... yes, Matt does that. Matt, yeah. Do that. Right. Yes. Yeah. I think because I think that my sense of smell is actually, well, you know, your sense of smell and your sense of taste are so strongly linked, but I actually mm -hmm. think that my sense of smell is better than my like palate. Like I think that the smell, I can identify things by their smell better than I can um, oftentimes by like their taste or something. So oh. I think for me, or, you know, if you're like trying to pick out, you eat something and you're like, what is that taste? I often find that when I smell it, then I'm like, oh, I know, I know what it is. Right. Just the other day, my mom had made something like a really classic Filipino dessert, but, um, I tasted it and I tasted something familiar kind of lemony. And I wasn't quite sure if it was like lemongrass or like macroot lime, or my sister thought it was ginger. And I was like, uh, no, it's definitely not. Um, <laughs> um, but I knew it was one of those two things. And so I smelled it. And then I was instantly, this is lemongrass. So I, uh, I do think there's something to that. But I also, I agree, it really enhances like the experience. And I also highly recommend that you smell, especially your fruit when you buy it. Mm. Yeah. I, I never buy fruit that I haven't picked up. And I know in COVID times, that's probably not cool, but yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, I try not to put it so close to my face, but I think like really good ripe fruit, you shouldn't have to put like right up to your nose either yep. to smell, right? Like really fragrant, mm -hmm. like pineapple or mangoes and things like that. That smell should come to you with, with it being, you know, within a foot of your face. So yeah, that's a good tip, Dan. Yeah, I completely agree. You just have to be discreet about it, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so, Dan, do you have any suggestions for like, you know, balanced and like, I guess, healthy-ish, but still really like delicious dishes or even snack items that, you know, if you're attending a holiday party and maybe you've been asked to bring something or you just want to bring something. Do you have any ideas for what those things could be? Or Agnes, do you have any ideas? <laughs> um, well, I guess uh, it might sound a little boring, but honestly, there's, there's just so many uh, different vegetables in this season that I think people can do really simple things with them. Um, like some of them you can just simply roast with, you know, a little bit of oil, salt and pepper and really allow that, that vegetables natural flavor to kind of sing. Um, you can certainly take those vegetables up up a notch by adding some fresh herb spices and citrus or something. But like something I was working on, another recipe I was working on for that blog that I'm doing was this winter kale salad. So it's like kale with shaved Brussels sprouts, sliced apples with an apple cider vinegar or apple cider vinaigrette. That's a really simple salad that will pop with that apple cider vinaigrette, but doesn't take a whole lot of work to do, and is super he super healthy. I think one thing that's probably a good one, I've been seeing like a lot of acorn squash recently, mm -hmm. and I think that it's just so visually striking. I feel like that, like some kind of maybe even just roasted and like um, either cut into rings or they just have such a great shape could yeah. be a, a nice dish that is like, you know, unusual enough, right? Like probably most people are still not eating acorn squash and still like visually looks impressive, right? If you were you know, kind of trying to impress with your, uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> with your um, potluck dish. <laughs> yeah, that was one idea I had. Yeah, the other thing uh, I was thinking about is like, a, kind of going off of, you know, driving around all day and you know, running errands around the holidays and just like eating whatever is the closest to you when you're already too hungry to like make a good decision. So I was thinking a little bit about snacks. And I was like, what if people just brought more snacks with them? Like when they went on these full day of errands and then you can control the snack or even like pack a lunch, right? You can pack mm -hmm. a sandwich, I guess. Yeah, that's, it's so funny you said that because a couple of years ago, I had asked Dan that, I had told Dan that question. He was, you know, we were talking about how to be healthier in our choices. And you had said then 
you know what? Why don't in those days where you have a hundred different catering events going on across campus, like why don't you pack like some nuts and things that you can grab quickly? Because I don't know if you remember, but when you have those real large events, the the only thing we would eat is the pizza that we would get delivered or things mm-hmm. like that, right? And we were starved. So I think you, you're right. Having in the car, having fruit or, you know, having with you fruit and nuts and water, mm-hmm. I think that would go a long way. Do you agree, Dan? Totally agree. Um, think about, oh, as food service professionals, we know this, right? We got to think about temperature safe food. So like, whole uh, hand fruit's a good one because it doesn't have to be refrigerated the nuts again great water yep uh granola is another good one mm-hmm. um even like like nut butters you could do too kind of stuff mm-hmm. like that oh yeah um see we're just solving solving problems <laughs> uh, what about um what about beverages then you know same thing we go to you go to a gathering and there's the infamous eggnog with ice cream in it and rum or whiskey. Like, okay, what are some of the uh, maybe some less uh, indulgent beverages that you would have in the holiday season, but that are still special, you know? How to make the right decisions, I guess. Because a lot of the punches, the apple cider, all that, that's that's really sweet. And what do you think? Should we stay away from it? <laughs> Well, that's a good question. Um, I haven't really thought about that. I kind of, so part of, I think, um, the strategy is, again, staying hydrated. So one general recommendation is to try to have like a glass of water between each alcoholic beverage. Um, well, that's a good one. Yeah. So that does a few things. Um, one, it slows you down, uh, you know, uh, and then two, again, it kind of keeps you hydrated. But as far as the different like eggnogs and punches and stuff, I guess, you know, if again, if it's if it's something that has this memory to it, like I'm sure there's plenty of people who have, you know, a, a strong food memory to with eggnog. Maybe you have a glass or whatever, enjoy it again, slow down, really enjoy the glass, and then maybe move on to something a little less indulgent. Maybe, you know, a glass of wine or something like that. Whatever you enjoy. Mm-hmm. That's some good advice. I like that. Yeah. So I know like a lot of people with alcohol like to, I think especially if they're trying to lose weight, right, or be mindful of their diet, a lot of people switch to um, lower calorie alcohols, right? They switch to like the clear liquors um, and things like that. And I, I don't know, I guess I'm just wondering, I've always sort of been a little bit skeptical about really strict calorie counting, A, because I find it really tedious and difficult to do and like I just, I just don't want to do it. So, so, but also I just, I, I don't, I don't know that. And again, I've never really like done it for a long time or or strictly. So I can't really say that it's had a great impact for me, but I just, I don't know. I always find it hard to kind of buy into that as like, that's how, you know, you can lose weight or kind of control your diet. It also just seems very joyless. It seems to kind of take all of the joy out of eating things because I think, at least for me, it it creates like guilt too around when you do indulge and then you're like, oh my gosh, this shot of whiskey is this many calories? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think you hit all the main points that I was thinking of as you kind of asked the question, right? Like it is a lot of work. Like you need, there's some apps out there now that make it easier. um, Sure. Um, But if you're not someone who enjoys the like data uh, recording of things and, and um, spreadsheets or even just like that kind of work, um, if you don't enjoy that, then it's 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 just gonna seem like every meal is now joyless and it's just full of all this work that I have to do, especially if you're if you're the one cooking, mm-hmm. you just did all that work to cook the food. Now you have to do all this work to enter this food into whatever app you're using. And then again, there's the the guilt piece that's like, well, I'm like tattletailing on myself or whatever, right? To this mm-hmm. this app who's judging me. right um but for some people it works right and some people who really struggle with weight and have found this as a solution it works for them and i think if it works for you you should keep doing it but if you've tried it and it doesn't work 
then then you realize right it's not for you there's other strategies that you can you could kind of take mm. yeah i've never I, done it myself like to try to see i just more try to pay attention to my hunger cues i think is what where i'm at right and yes mm-hmm. you know i asked dan if he had any over if he had a personal overall wellness strategy but i didn't ask you <laughs> How, <laughs> do you practice mindful eating no judgment if you don't but you know i'm just wondering if you like you approach it in, well just because dan made me think that right you know maybe mm -hmm. um what's really needed is like a customized approach to different people and their lifestyles which sounds like common sense but you know yeah I, you know that's it's actually a good question so i see for me i see wellness as in in food as not not purchasing food that is already prepared you know so like those uh, already made meals things that you would put in a microwave for me that's that goes against my deep beliefs of wellness right mm -hmm. anything that would have uh, harmful dyes or a lot of additives or things like that now my personal issue is quantities right sometimes when something is good i overindulge and things like that but otherwise i feel that i always try to buy really good basic ingredients mm -hmm. right so if uh you know a limited amount of processed food and if there is processed food, maybe granola bars or things like that, that, you know, I'm not going to make granola bars for scr from scratch for my son every day, you know. But then I really try to pay attention at the, the the list of ingredients in there. And if there's too many things that I cannot pronounce or it's, it's really too much, then I won't buy it. So that's kind of my uh, strategy to wellness is really being, you know, buying wholesome food and uh, and making making real meals and really not purchasing anything already made you know and also like not doing we do take out once a week and that's it you know so making food at home is you know the my wellness strategy sounds good it sounds like a good plan yeah yeah i think that um i i don't know that i have any sort of subscribed uh wellness strategy for myself but i know that like over I would say maybe like the last 10 years, probably like as long as I've known you, Anya's, right, mm -hmm. is when I, my like relationship with food really changed, but also my relationship with exercise really changed. Right. Right. So like I had been a really, really like high level athlete playing multiple sports my whole life and I ate like a horse. I could put down so much food. And, you know, when I went to college, I weighed at like 105 pounds and was an athlete through college and everything. And it wasn't until, you know, real life, adult life. And then I started working That's in the food service, right? Adulting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And while I always loved food, I think then once I started to work in food service, I really became like very connected to it. So then I also like started to eat more or really like enjoy it more, I guess, right. um, and think more about it. And so at the same time, you know, my exercise very quickly dropped to, from what its normal levels were. And so, you know, I think over the last 10 years, I've just kind of like gone back and forth between like gaining a lot of weight and then kind of picking up exercising again and losing some and just kind of fluctuating back and forth. So yeah, so I think, you know, what I've learned at least in 10 years is that Dan is right. Absolutely. Everybody should <laughs> exercise, not just because it's good for you, but because it makes you feel good. Right. Like, I, mm -hmm. you know, like having the one thing um, that this pandemic gave me was a whole lot of time. And so, you know, what I decided to do with that time was to really get back into exercising. And I have no like illusions of becoming like the athlete that I once was, you know, that ship has long sailed. But um, <laughs> but I wanted to get to a point where it didn't feel like a chore where it was like something that I, I wanted to go do again because it made me feel good. And that was hard. It was like really hard work to get into like really good habits. And I had to start very, very small and be okay with that in my head, which was hard, especially coming from a place where I had been like this very prolific athlete, starting with, you know, half an hour of yoga every morning was like, you know, very, very difficult for me to kind of wrap my head around and be okay with like, that's okay. That's enough exercise for today. You know, like, don't overdo it. Don't get hurt because then this whole thing will be shot and you'll have to start from square one. 
I've been um, there before. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. I have 100% been there before. So, you know, I think this past year, I've really tried to focus on that and not really, and I haven't really focused too much on my food, I think, because I'm also really resistant to sort of adjusting that too dramatically, right? Like I've never been on any sort of subscribed diet, right? And I don't really ever want to be because I just really enjoy eating and I enjoy eating different things. But I think you're right, Anya, a lot of it too is quantity control and like recognizing when you're full and when you've eaten enough of something. And I think too, that's why I've focused so much over the last like six months or so on like getting good at um, repurposing leftovers right. because then I don't feel bad also about not finishing like everything right. that I made. And, and even, and even if I just have like a little bit left knowing that like, that's okay, I'll put it in the fridge and like tomorrow I'll figure out something to do with it. It'll right. be fine. And it's not going to waste. And I don't have to feel like, no, I got to finish it because like, that's not enough to save. So I think like that's been my approach a little bit. And I did start approaching how I grocery shop a little bit differently. It's a little bit like what Dan was saying, when you flip sort of like that, the plate to where you're focusing on the vegetables. But I think I, um, I think maybe I haven't gotten to the level of the portioning yet, but I, do, <laughs> I <laughs> but I have started focusing um, more on the vegetables in my grocery shopping to the point where first I buy the vegetables because those are also the things that are the most perishable. So, you know, with all this quarantining and lockdown and people trying to not go to grocery stores, first I focused on the vegetables because I had to, because they would go bad. And so I had to figure out first, how are you going to use like two pounds of spinach that you have here? And so now when I think about like meals and meal planning for the week, a lot of the times what I'll do is I'll go to, so I buy most of my vegetables at um, the Asian market near me. So I'll go there first without knowing what I'm going to make for the week. So I might go on like Saturday or Sunday, get a bunch of vegetables that like appeal to me, right? That I'm like, oh, this vegetable's in season. I haven't had this in so long. Let me get, like we were talking about daikon mm -hmm. on yes. Mm -hmm. um, and so then I make the opportunity to to incorporate those vegetables into and figure out what the protein is later, right? So I'll look at the daikon first instead and then look at the whole week and be like, okay, so I have this big daikon. What can I make? Um, you know, all week long. And what's the protein that I'm just then going to add in. But then I think I just need to take it the step further to the portioning that Dan was mentioning, you know, like how <laughs> much vegetable to protein, right? Yeah. <laughs> and starch, yeah. the rice, you know, the rice runs deep here. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I think that's a good approach, Nat. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, what do I you agree. Think, I agree. Yeah, I agree. Dan, the dietitian approves. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so dan what are you doing for the holidays this year you know we're still living in the time of corona um so i think lots of people's holidays are going to look different what are you doing and do you have any suggestions for people who maybe are celebrating like unorthodox holidays this year hmm well uh, my girlfriend and I are planning on making like a little mini Thanksgiving dinner for two uh, for Thanksgiving, not going anywhere, but so it'll just be the two of us. So we're probably, we're planning on doing like a little mini prep night on Wednesday night. Um, and then talking about like you're saying exercising, we're going to go for like a morning run on Thursday, which will be nice, hopefully weather wise. And then once we're done with the run and doing like a little post meal, our post run meal we'll do uh we'll just dive right into making dinner but with just two people i think the challenge that we're going to face and it's going to be interesting to see how it works out is how to do portion sizes right right mm. yeah you so we're like not a, getting you could buy like a turkey breast right just do like a turkey breast and then you'll have turkey left to save right yeah exactly yeah so we we're i was trying to think of like how small of a turkey we could get we that's yeah no. so we're gonna go with the turkey breast yeah yeah and then um, just do kind of probably looking at recipes for uh, four servings for all the sides, and then we'll know we'll have leftovers. But they'll be they'll be you know that's fine. That's what Thanksgiving's all about, I think. Yeah. Yeah. So True. we're taking we did a whole episode on the leftovers. <laughs> yes. Oh yeah, yeah. So we're also uh, we've uh, talked to some of our relatives to find out like what their recipes are for some of the things that we typically 
Um, we each, you know, go to our separate families normally for Thanksgiving, but trying to grab some of those family recipes and we're going to try to recreate them um, for our meal. That's awesome. Yeah. What about you guys? Well, for Thanksgiving, I uh, um, I host Thanksgiving and we'll have about uh, 15, um, you know, 15 people over and I'll make Thanksgiving. I've been hosting it. This is going to be the, I believe, the fourth year that I do it. And then uh, the end of the year holidays, you know, we've been staying kind of in the same uh, with the same families, same cluster of people. So we'll see that th- those families again for uh, New Year's, uh, for uh, Christmas Eve and probably Christmas Day as well. So it'll be, uh, you know, it'll be it'll be good to be, you know, to be together. Obviously, I'm not able to fly to France since that, you know, as of right now, there are no, you know, the country is back on lockdown. But yeah, so that's what I'll be doing. Probably some FaceTime with everyone back home. What about you, Nat? Yeah, so um, for Thanksgiving this year, it's just going to be me, uh, Zach, and my parents, actually. I think I've mentioned before that my younger sister and her uh, boyfriend usually do Thanksgiving up at uh, his family's farm, and my older sister doesn't usually come up for Thanksgiving. But actually, a fun thing that I'm going to be doing right before Thanksgiving is I will be traveling up to the farm also for the weekend to help them process turkeys. Wow. So, yes. So I'm, I'll make sure to report back after that's all done. Yeah, so that'll be really interesting. And I don't know, maybe it will put me off turkey forever. I'm not sure. I've heard what about do you like mean, so oh, hold on what like do you processing, mean processing turkeys, turkeys for 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 selling to people for eating for thanksgiving oh. <laughs> so like you know you're taking the alive turkeys and making them no longer alive turkeys that people oh you're not gonna want to well eat. that's a good thing that you don't have turkey for your meal it's true anyway yeah, it's so true. you're good yeah. with that yeah so i'll be going and doing that the weekend before thanksgiving since my Thanksgiving is going to be so small this time. I think it'll, I think it'll be all right. I'll do like my prep, you know, some prep ahead of time and then right. still have like a couple of days before. And then for the like Christmas and new year holiday and everything, I really, I really don't know. And I haven't been thinking about it much because honestly, it makes me very depressed because it's truly my favorite, favorite time of the year. And it's um, because, uh, you know, I have a very, very large extended family, you know, that are kind of split all over the place. But, you know, there's large groups of us in the Philadelphia and South Jersey area and a large group of us in the Toronto area. And usually what happens is we just have this massive gathering where even like the Canadians will come down to here or we'll go up to Canada. Last year, um, we went up to the Hamilton, um, Ontario to spend uh, Christmas with our family up there. And so it's just these giant gatherings. There's so much food, right? It's big, big Filipino gatherings. So there's just endless food all day long from like dusk till dawn. And, uh, and yeah, so, you know, that is obviously not going to happen this year. uh, But I think I'm also just like not fully accepting that. So I'm trying not to think about it. But I really don't know. I'm not sure. Maybe it will just be immediate family. I'm sure we'll do some virtual component, you know, with other family members and everything. But but yeah, it's definitely going to be different. I've been trying to think of ways to kind of creatively still still carry out some like traditions that that have, you know, that are things that either I always do um, at that time of year or, you know, my family always does. So so who knows? Maybe once I get past the hump of like right. accept of like denial into acceptance, <laughs> then I'll be able to come up with creative solutions. You know, I'm just right. still in denial. <laughs> so, Dan, before we end tonight's episode, I did have one question that I have always wanted to ask you. And so now I'm going to take a chance to ask you it here while we're recording, just to put you on the spot. What is your ultimate like guilty pleasure food, not necessarily holiday related, just like what is the one thing that you, you just have to have when it's there? <laughs> Ooh, Anya thinks she knows. <laughs> Anya, you know what his is or you know what yours is? No, I feel like I've heard, I think I've asked them before. Oh, okay. So I guess I have, so there's maybe two. Um, Ooh, two, okay. okay. Two. So like one is one that like, uh, I frequently indulge in, and then another is one that like is super rare, and it's like this weird thing that just every once in a while I just get kind of like a craving for, and I'll go buy it. So the one that's really more common is pizza. 
Mm. Anya, is that what you were thinking or no? I feel like there's something, there's a processed food involved in that answer, but no, maybe. <laughs> maybe. But pizza is one that like, yeah. there's just so many good pizzas and it's really almost like its own type of cuisine, right? You can put so many things on it mm -hmm. and it can be so different. Mm -hmm. um, so that's the one. And then the, maybe this is what, I don't think I've ever shared this with Anya, but maybe she did. Maybe I have Doritos. Oh, spicier nacho Doritos. Mm -hmm. I don't know why it's every yep. once in a while. Is that the one I told uh -huh. you? Yeah, because you had said that sometimes you would like go and buy it and it was purposeful. It yes. wasn't like, <laughs> yes, it, it wasn't, you. it wasn't like, you know, just grab it like this. No, there was like a lot of thought involved with making that purchase. I know this is going to make me sound like a total crazy person, but like I'll get the craving or the feeling that I want them and I'll wait like three or four days. And right. like, do you really want them, Dan? Do you really need them? <laughs> and like, sometimes it'll just go away and I won't go buy them. But then sometimes it's like four days later. And it's like, you're still thinking about these Doritos. Go get the Doritos and go ahead and enjoy them. <laughs> that's what I do before buying something. <laughs> oh yes, that's what it yeah. Shopping for clothes. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's a good one, Dan. I haven't had Doritos. I mean, I used to love them too, but I just like kind of stopped eating them. I don't know. Or I never buy, think to buy them. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I haven't had Doritos in a long time, but now see, now I'm probably going to have to go get some when I go to grocery shopping tomorrow. Right. <laughs> Make sure you eat before you go. True. <laughs> so I only buy the small bag, not, yeah. not the big one. <laughs> oh, that's a good that's a good one. Well, while we're on the subject, Agnes, do you have a true guilty pleasure? So many. <laughs> <laughs> I know I feel the same. It's hard for me to pick. I knew I was gonna ask Dan this question, so I tried to think of what my own answer would be. Right. And I really didn't know. But I think it's also because I am not one to stop myself from indulging so like right. for me there's not that much guilt involved i'm just like <laughs> i feel like any type of any type of really any cheeses you can put it in mm. front of me and i will eat it the stinkier the better and i don't discriminate i love them all and i feel like that's yeah i'm not so much i mean i'll eat sweets and stuff like that but definitely cheese that's that's my thing. Mm, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I thought of so many weird, like, snacks and things that that I love. Especially things, I kept thinking of things that I love and most people really don't like. One thing that came to me was Slim Jims. I really, really love Slim Jims. And I know that they are highly processed and full of all kinds mm -hmm. of terrible things, including probably three days worth of salt. But every once in a while, I just have such a craving and I have to, I have to get one. And you know, it's the you worst because they, they put them at the cash register at the grocery store. Oh, so Do hard. like then, do like then, wait three days. <laughs> you wait three days. <laughs> it's true. Well, one thing I have been doing though, is when I have cravings for things now and, and, and it lasts for a while is instead of like buying it, I try and like force myself to like, well, if you want this then just make it, learn how to make it. And, and I have, I, I like actually like learned to make lots of things and they're not so much guilty pleasure things, but you know, whenever I've really been craving, especially foods that I miss for, um, from like eating in Hong Kong, right. It's pretty easy. Like you can find some really good high quality, uh, Cantonese food, right. And Sichuan food in Philly. So it's really easy to just go to like, all right, I'm really feeling like my favorite, like beef chow fun. So I'm just going to order takeout. But instead I'm like, no, I'll just learn how to make it until it tastes like, you know, what I remember. And sometimes it never quite gets there. Mm -mm. Uh, but sometimes that whole process enough is enough to to like get me engaged enough that I'm not having this like crazy craving either. Right. And it still sort of hits the spot. Plus, then I feel like very accomplished and like I did something productive. Mm. All, right. All right. Well, Nat, why don't we uh, ask Dan a little bit more about his website and his blog that he yeah. is starting? Yeah, tell us about your blog, Dan. Yeah, so I started, uh, well, I guess you guys actually inspired me a little bit with your side project, this podcast, and I thought... <gasps> oh my gosh! Yeah. He so inspired I thought, you! So I thought, like, I have lots of people, friends, family, you guys sometimes ask me kind of like, 
what do I make at home or what do I cook? Or like you guys asked earlier, my wellness philosophy or whatever. So I thought it'd be a fun little project for me to kind of put some of that down on on paper, so to speak, or in, in the form of a blog. And so in thinking about that, I wanted to try to see if I could showcase or, or show people that simple food done well can taste really great while also being better for them and better for the planet, right? So mm-hmm. I'm going to kind of put together seasonal menus. My thought right now is to have two menu items per week that someone could make for like a single person, right? One person, which is so hard to do normally to write recipes for one. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, so they'll make one, they'll make two things a week, but each of the menu items will kind of be served in two different ways. So maybe it's with some type of starchy vegetable two of the days, and maybe the next day it's with some type of whole grain. But most of the veggies and some of the, most of the hard work stuff is the same. But it's all going to be starting with fresh whole seasonal ingredients, um, using a lot of a lot of herbs and spices and citrus to kind of bring some flavor into it. Um, using minimal amounts of fat, uh, mostly just plant based oils, and then simple and quick cooking methods or to to kind of um, help it be simple. Yeah, so that's what my thought is. I'm thinking of having the first recipes kind of drop the first day of uh, winter, uh, which oh, is December great. 21st, I believe. Mm-hmm. Um, so coming soon, I'm, uh, I have a uh, Twitter and Facebook page at Dietitian Dan Blog. Uh, and I also have a website, dietitiandanblog.com. And so we'll be doing on Instagram, I'll be doing a little bit of teasers, maybe some behind the scenes footage of or, or photos of um, the ingredients I'll be using, trying to spark some interest. And if anything, um, it might just be some inspiration for people, right, that are looking to kind of do what you guys talked about and what I talked about today of like eating a little bit healthy by just using cooking yourself and doing kind of whole ingredients versus buying prepackaged or processed foods that sounds great can you uh tell everybody again the uh the uh information of your website and your instagram it is at dietitian dan blog all one word uh on instagram and facebook and again dietitian dan blog.com perfect awesome all right everybody should go and check it out that sounds that sounds awesome all right well I think it's time for this week's last bite. So, Dan, since you are our guest today, do you have any last thoughts, a last bite that you'd like to share? Well, I guess we kind of talked about it earlier, but I would like to kind of say like the holiday season in general for a lot of people can be hard. And I think this holiday season um, probably in particular is going to be even harder than usual. Lots of us probably won't get to see our family members or at least not in person or maybe just a select few of them. Um, So I think we need to definitely be good to ourselves whenever we can. I think we need to not be too hard on ourselves. And I think we need to just strive for that balance of of our diet, like we said earlier, but understand that if you stumble, that's fine. Just recognize it, own it, and move on. That's a good point, Dan. That's a good point, yep. This year has definitely been tough. So So what you're saying is I can eat as much as, you want. <laughs> as long as you recognize it and own it. Yeah. That, by the way, <laughs> yeah. that by the way is my holiday guilty pleasure i love a good yule log and i'm not normally a big cake person but a good yule log oh that is a thing of beauty what a selective memory you have, Nat. That's incredible. <laughs> you forget everything. <laughs> You're just going to keep the last bite. <laughs> you know, I, I, I hear what I want to hear, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and yes, what about you? What's your last bite this week? Well, I am um, very fortunate. Joe and I bought ourselves a Peloton for our anniversary. So everybody knows how great you know the bike is it's been two weeks now since uh we've received it and we'll see if it lasts normally the excitement kind of fade away after six weeks you know Mm -hmm. uh we'll see how it lasts but that's not my last bite my last bite is i did not know that anybody can subscribe to the uh, peloton app 
And I didn't know that, uh, but you don't need a bike to to have it. And there are so many programs on the app beyond the cycling piece. There are yoga classes. So all the classes could be live on live or on demand, but there are yoga classes, cardio classes, meditations, which I've taken like tons of meditation classes uh, before going to bed with them. Um, they have outdoor running programs, walking programs, stretching, different types of challenges. And, uh, you know, all the instructors are, you know, really, really amazing. And, um, yeah, they have, uh, they have plenty of little badges and things to keep you motivated. And you can really create this community and, and keep yourself in check. You know, I've taken some of the, some of the classes that, are, that were not cycling and it's, it's very, it feels very safe and comfortable and nobody's judging you and you don't have to dress to go to the gym. And, you know, we canceled our, our gym membership, our family membership, because we didn't want to, you know, we were worried about being in the gym and our safety and all that good stuff. But you know, it's uh, I, I've never done any kind of online classes before like that. But the fact that you can take live classes from the instructors and you see everybody who's on there, it feels, you know, it's just it's just really great. So you anybody, as I say, you don't need you don't need the bike. You can subscribe to the app by downloading it. It costs twelve ninety nine a month to subscribe to the app. But I thought that uh, they have a 30 day trial. So even if you just want to do it throughout the holidays, to help you go through, they have, it's really unlimited the amount of things that they have every day, being able to take live yoga classes or, so I think it could be, um, could be good for a lot of people. So definitely check it out. That's my last bite. Yeah. So do you have to, so anybody can subscribe? Yeah, you and- can download, the, you can download the app and it's, yeah. Oh, it's through an app. Okay. okay. Yeah. So do you like these classes, though? Do you watch them like on your phone or like on the TV or on the well, bike? So right now, um, you know, I don't have like a, a, a very I have we have an old, uh, older TV, so I don't I don't put it on the TV or anything like that. Right now it's on the bike. I do the classes on the bike. The um, But you can put them, you can stream them on your phone, or on the tablet, or on your laptop, anywhere like that. Yeah. Or you can put it on the TV if your TV connects. You know, some TV you can play apps on there. I don't right, know how it's right, called, right. but yeah. But yeah, I thought it was it was pretty good. Like I didn't know that. I know I always see a lot of ad on social media for those programs, for those like 30 day like programs. And this this is kind of like more of a wellness thing, you know, and I, I love they have they have those outdoor running programs. So if you if you're training for like a half marathon or something, it can you can have somebody like help you throughout that and guide you like how long should you run the first three times? And it's just it's just a lot of programs and structure to to help. That's cool. Yeah, and it tracks you know it tracks your wellness. There's um, as I said, there's challenges. For instance, every month if you exercise a certain amount of days during the month or um, there's walking programs to encourage you to like walk 30 days every day it's just it's kind of like keeps you in check and and helps you you know is peloton paying you to to... (laughs) no they don't don't need me (laughs) they really don't need me but you know a lot of people say it's kind of like a cult and you know the other yesterday i was on the bike and i swear i was talking to the lady who cannot hear me i was talking to the instructor she was talking to me and i was talking to her you know, it is like a cult. Like she's telling me <laughs> that I can do it, that I have it in me. So yeah, I'm doing it. <laughs> as long as you don't in- turn into the Peloton girl from that ad. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> no, I wasn't scared. I just didn't want to like start working out, but you know. <laughs> um, <laughs> What is your last bite nut? So my last bite today is, so th- in thinking about the holidays, I've kind of been um, starting to look at, you know, w- what to do for gifts this year, especially considering a lot of them may have to get mailed, which means I need to be, you know, better prepared um, than if I were to be able to give them, give gifts in person on Christmas and that kind of thing. So I've just been looking at all kinds of different things and I, I um, something came up. I don't even remember how I came across it, but 
William Sonoma is partnering with No Kid Hungry, and what they are selling is a set of 10 different, so you can buy them individually or um, as a set of 10, uh, of 10 um, like silicone spatulas that have a design on each one of them. And the design, each one is designed by a different celebrity Chef, basically yep. yeah um so like Ina Garten has one so yep. you know, Anya's you know what you're getting for Christmas <laughs> um Hoda has one Giada has one yeah. Kristen Bell Dolly Parton and yeah so um they're selling those and I can't remember I think a third of the proceeds goes to No Kid Hungry which kind of led me on this search for gifts that are a little bit more meaningful than just to like the individual person that you're giving them to as you know I I love giving gifts you know my yes. goal is always yes. to make people cry when they see the gift because they feel so touched <laughs> but you know I've always liked the idea of like at weddings and things when people in in lieu of like people giving gifts right they make a donation in everybody's names right? Right, to to some nonprofit or a cause that they you know that uh, means something to them but I think it's cool have still having like a tangible gift that does like a similar thing right and it's fun so so yeah so the so no kids hungry you know what they really focus on is is dealing with child hunger in the US which you know I think projections be uh, show that like because of the coronavirus one in four children could face hunger this year no kid hungry what they do, you know, every year, even without the pandemic, is they really help to facilitate um, schools, breakfast, pro uh, free breakfast programs, after school meal programs, uh, summer meals, food skills education, that kind of thing. Uh, so I think it's like a really worthy cause, especially right now. Um, and that kind of had me thinking too, you know, like, like you said, Dan, this has been a really hard year for so many people. So I think what would, what, certainly I think would be a great gift to receive is like something that I know has also gone some way to benefit other people who, you know, have maybe had an even worse time of right. dealing with this pandemic and everything that's kind of happened this year. So yeah, so I would highly suggest going to William Sonoma, picking up one of those, one of those spatulas. I believe they are, I don't know, I want to say like $15, maybe something like that. They're so um, cute. They're very, very cute. Yeah. Yeah. $14.95. Yeah. And I think they, they're, you know, they're just such a fun and then they're still like a unique gift. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so for all those home cooks in your life, there you go, gentlemen. There's a, <laughs> there's a gift. There's, there's your gifts already done for the year. But yeah. So that's my last bite. All right, everybody, thank you so much for listening today. Dan, thank you so much for joining us. If you want to uh, follow Dan, you can do that. You can follow his blog on Facebook and Instagram at Dietitian Dan Blog, all one word. Or you can check out his website, dietitiandanblog.com. Dan, thank you so much for being here. And then a reminder to all our listeners, uh, the links to a lot of the things that we talked about today, uh, like the William Sonoma spatulas, things like that. Dan's blog, obviously, you can find links to in our episode descriptions or on our website, dinnerlastnight.buzzsprout.com. So make sure to check those out. As always, if you want to share your own recipes and stories or suggest a topic for an episode, uh, or maybe you want to tell us about um, your own uh, wellness strategy or how you kind of try to think about mindful eating over the holidays, you can always leave us a comment or send us a message on our Instagram and Facebook at Dinner Last Night Podcast. That also goes for maybe you have a question for Dan. Perhaps you would like to leave him a comment or send him a message on his Instagram and Facebook. Uh, you can also always remember, send us an email at dinnerlastnightpodcast at gmail.com. You all know this by now, but you can listen to the podcast on Spotify, Apple, Google Podcasts, and now YouTube. Just look for Dinner Last Night Podcast. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Leave us a rating and a review if you feel so inclined. It helps us. It helps other people find the podcast. Podcast, and we just really enjoy hearing from you. And lastly, while you're visiting our social media, do not forget to let us know what you made for dinner last night. Bye! Bye! Bye.